What's up, y'all? It's a mess in here, but um, all the sound editing is out thanks to the dry ice tip I got uh, from some of the Brat groups on Facebook. So thank you guys for that suggestion. Dry ice worked freaking amazing. Um, and I really wish I didn't waste a couple hours <laughs> chipping away at it with a razor blade when I got most of it done in about 30, 40 minutes with the dry ice. So awesome tip there. I strongly recommend it for anything st stubborn and stuck on like that. And it worked like a charm. Um, but yeah, everything is pretty much stripped out of here. Um, it's a little bit of a mess right now because I've been working on the body too. Uh, but yeah, uh, in this video, you're just going to see me pull off all the lights, uh, some trim. Uh, I haven't done the front end yet. I'm going to do that last. Um, and then get to work on sanding down the car. So enjoy. Step one, put dry ice in a bucket. Step two, crush up dry ice with a hammer. Step three, Pour 91% isopropyl alcohol into the bucket. Step four, spread over the sound deadening material you want to remove. Step five, let it start to pop. Step six, when the popping starts stopping, fry it up. Step seven, clean it up and check out how easy that was. If anybody's got one of these for a first gen driver's side taillight lens, please, I need one. No good. Not really in the mood to take the wheel off to get to this little screwdriver. So, so here's a little trick, especially if you don't have one of those right angle screwdriver Allen wrench deals. Uh, just get your small socket that'll fit. Grab a Phillips bit. Now we can get in there and not mess up anything. So initially, I was just going to sand it down to the first layer of primer uh, because I don't know how long it's going to be till I get to paint the whole car uh, with the weather getting colder. But um, this door started to get super thick paint-wise, plus it had the decal on there. Um, two or three layers of primer, two or three layers of paint. Uh, you know, it's four years old, it's been painted a couple times. so. It started getting really thick on the door and I just had enough of that, that sander. I don't have an air compressor here yet. So I was using that electric sander and it was just way too slow. So I busted out the angle grinder and uh, got to work and just went ahead and went down to bare metal. So um, that's kind of why you see the jump from where it was in the video to uh, where it is now. So, yep, sanding was too slow today.
several days later. All right guys, so here's the progress so far. We've got uh, most of the passenger side done. Hard to see. Uh, got most of the rear done. Pretty much all of the driver's side done. Still need to do the hood, the roof, and get everything out of the front end, do the front end, uh, and the passenger fender. Uh, one note that I'd like to make uh, you can see all of the texture, you know, you see all of these up and down swipes here from the grinder. Um, this is the fastest way to get down to the metal, hands down. But if you're going to paint your car with traditional water or oil-based paint, um, you probably want to use a DA and sandpaper. Um, I'm using a textured, you know, Raptor liner, so I don't have to worry about using a ton of body filler and going back over and sanding this down a whole bunch. I'm just going to spray this down with uh, acid etch primer and, um, and hit it with the, with the final coat of Raptor liner. So, uh, just FYI, probably don't want to use the angle grinder so aggressive as I've done. If you plan on painting with a water and oil based paint, but anything textured Raptor liner, uh, line X, anything like that. Um, this is going to be fine. So if you guys got a car that weighs less than 2,500 pounds, don't go spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a pair of car jack dollies. Uh, just go to Atwoods, Harbor Freight, somewhere. I got 800 pound furniture dolly in the rear, 1,000 pound furniture dolly in the front, and this has been a game changer. My wife can pull up her car because I can tuck the car all the way in the garage. I can stick it all the way to the front so that all my dust from all the sanding and everything, you know, is my neighbor's problem and it just it's so nice to be able to move it around since it can't drive on its own power yet so check it out This is the first time it's even faced this direction in my driveway or in my garage. Decided to show off the front end to the neighbors. Plus, I still gotta take the front grill and the headlights and everything out anyway. Now I can do that in the sun on a warm day. There's probably room for the old Lexus there, the white wagon. All right, guys, you can tell I've been wearing a respirator for the last couple hours. <laughs> anyway, um, so all that's left to do, like I said, hood, roof, uh, fender, front end, and then inside, we're just going to go in and we're going to scuff some of this up. Uh, there'll be some spots where I go down to the bare metal where there's rust or anything like that. It's all surface wherever there is any. Um, but uh, since it won't endure as much wear and tear inside, I'm not gonna go all the way down the metal. I'm gonna scuff everything and then uh, and shoot it like that. Same with the bed. Um, so that should go a lot faster. So hopefully in the next video, I'm doing some of the final sanding on the exterior, prepping the inside, and then getting everything ready to, uh, to actually start spraying some, some liner. So um, hopefully that comes quick. Thanks for following along, guys.